For a significant portion of recent history, one of the most perplexing questions was the victory of Western firms in China. Classes and books devoted to deciphering the logic behind this highly priced market have traditionally been offered at the nation's most prestigious business schools. Topics covered have ranged from articles in the Harvard Business Review on how to manage a multinational corporation in Asia to reading recommendations on how the Chinese think. But the narrative is going through a significant shift right now. More and more Chinese businesses are pondering the question of how they, too, may succeed in global markets beyond simply offering low costs, inexpensive manufacturing, or investment capital to spend. Technology-driven business strategies are proving to be successful for a new generation of technologically advanced startup companies. Zhang Yiming, a software engineer and entrepreneur who was relatively unknown at the time but had some success in launching a real estate search company called 99Fong. Calm had an idea in 2012. His idea was to provide users with content that was relevant to them based on the recommendations that were generated by an artificial intelligence engine. ByteDance was established in less than two years, and within that time frame, more than 13 million customers had signed up for the company's debut product, Gene Tushio, an AI-driven, personalized news aggregator. ByteDance apps for the Chinese and worldwide markets have generated headlines in Bloomberg, The New York Times, and other newspapers across the world. As a result, Zhang has become a multi-billionaire as a direct result of ByteDance's success. TikTok, a controversial short video social media app with approximately 800 million monthly active users, is a part of the company's suite of products. Many of the app's users are teens who lip-sync, dance, or provide other forms of entertainment for other teenagers. The application boasts 30 million monthly active users in the United States alone, and these users spend an average of 46 minutes each day using the application. As a result, it has earned a spot in the social media strategy of every big corporation that deals directly with customers, right alongside Facebook and Instagram. When competitors like Tencent or Alibaba elected to focus initially on their large home market, Zhang chose to prioritize worldwide expansion and market expansion from the very beginning. This was a fundamental differentiation between Zhang and his competitors. However, TikTok is no longer an outlier in this regard. In recent years, and despite a slowdown during the pandemic, Chinese startups have increasingly been pursuing Western and other worldwide markets as part of their main strategy. This trend has continued despite the fact that there has been a slowdown during the pandemic. In point of fact, according to a poll conducted by PwC in 2020, 70% of Chinese unicorns have intentions to expand internationally. In contrast to the majority of Western companies that relocated to China and emphasized their origins and brand, for example, French or Italian luxury, German quality, and in contrast to the early waves of Chinese companies expanding abroad with their value-for-money products, for example, Huawei, Xiaomi, these companies focus entirely on their technology-first and data-driven business models when expanding into new markets. Beyond TikTok, other examples of this include robotics startup Geek Plus, who's U.S. Office opened in early 2020, and clients include Dell, DHL, and Toyota. Since time, the world's most valuable artificial intelligence company, consumer apps like Zimalay FM, a leading podcast player that owns 70% of the audiobook rights to best-selling titles in China and has recently made an investment in San Francisco-based Himalaya Media, and since time. Shine, a fast fashion disruptor with a market capitalization of $10 billion that has garnered increasing attention from China specialists over the past few weeks, is an especially interesting example. Its slick website and Instagram page, which has 20 million followers, not including millions more across local country Instagram pages, features celebrities like Katy Perry or Lil Nas X and event collaborations with popular artists like Tanashi and Nick Jonas but gives no hint as to where the company got its start. Few people are aware that a company that has become China's largest foreign fashion shop may be found hiding behind the seductive pouts of social media influencers and the frilly crop tops that cost $5 to $10 each. It is the number one shopping app in the iOS app stores of multiple countries, the second most popular shopping site in the United States, and one of the most visited fashion sites in the world, appealing to the trend of hyper-low-cost, high-variety fashion amongst younger generations. In addition, it is the number one shopping app in the iOS app stores of multiple countries. It also recently made an unsuccessful bid to acquire the financially troubled Arcadia Group, including Topshop. Shine's primary objective, very similar to that of TikTok's, is to learn exactly what its customers want and then give it to them. It is primarily a technology company, but they also sell clothing as a side business. 
However, moving out of China and beyond familiar territory has also meant managing new challenges abroad. This is in addition to maintaining a balance with the developing Chinese government at home. Shine, despite the fact that it is still relatively new to regulators, has already been prohibited in India as part of a restriction on 59 Chinese applications owing to security concerns. TikTok's legal difficulties are well known to most people, and Shine is already banned in India. In the future, it is possible that it may be influenced by more protectionist import-export regulations in the EU, which are abolishing VAT exemptions for low-value imports with a value of fewer than 22 euros. How should the leaders of businesses throughout the world approach the rapid advancement of technology in China? Others in the West have a more hopeful view of the expansion of the Chinese technology industry, claiming that the development of new technologies anywhere may benefit people everywhere, contrary to the viewpoint of some analysts in the West who have adopted a zero-sum, us-versus-them approach. Both ways of thinking are understandable, yet, one or the other can be taken to an extreme. A more measured attitude is required of leaders if they are to be successful. The historically interwoven Southeast Asian region has been a chosen destination for the expansion initiatives of many of these corporations. One reason for this is the region's rapid growth, but another is partly owing to the challenges that have been mentioned. ByteDance, for example, has already set up a headquarters in Singapore, which is politically more neutral, as have its tech titan peers Alibaba and Tencent. This, it has been commented by some industry experts, would also allow these companies to have a plan B in the event that their Chinese and global operations need to be separated. The total amount of money that China invests in the region might reach up to $500 billion by the year 2025. As a direct consequence of this, the amount of influence that Chinese tech startups and larger, more established firms have in the region is expected to keep expanding. However, because there is a growing level of distrust of China throughout the area, geopolitics will undoubtedly take place at the bargaining table as well. The expansion of technology in China is unavoidable, and one can choose to see it either as a risk or an opportunity. Western political and commercial leaders cannot afford to ignore this issue, much less have a mindlessly hostile or favorable attitude toward it. Ignoring it entirely is not even an option. Instead, they need to make an effort to comprehend and effectively participate in the Chinese technological world, else, they run the risk of falling behind. The phrase innovation appeared 165 times in China's most recent five-year plan, which was issued in the year 2020, while the phrase digital appeared 81 times. In comparison, the Communist Party was only mentioned 54 times in the entire report. As China works toward its goal of doubling its gross domestic product by the year 2035, it is abundantly evident how much weight the Chinese government is placing on its escalating ambition to become a technological superpower. China's recent growth story has been synonymous with consumer technology, including both platforms and hardware. However, the country is shifting its focus to high-tech manufacturing, and it is embarking on a new wave of innovation that is intended to secure its position as the global leader in industrial technology. To achieve economic self-sufficiency in those sectors of the economy that China views as being of the utmost strategic importance, such as the construction of the technological infrastructure required to underpin the country's targeted growth, it will be essential for China to be successful in achieving this goal. The path that lies ahead will continue to be unpredictable. It is beyond a question that a powerful Chinese government and the chilling of Chinese relations with a number of other nations will continue to be a key element in determining the strategies of all Chinese enterprises, not just technology-driven startups in China. However, as the cases of TikTok and WeChat in the United States have demonstrated, it is feasible to successfully navigate both global and local politics. And as Chinese businesses continue to learn about expansion and observe these early success stories, the narrative of market entry has already begun to shift in response to these developments. That's it for today. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.